Today we are going to talk about cloud formation and precipitation. Precipitation is formed by two processes, one being collision coalescence. This is when small and large droplets collide and coalesce, which means they form into one mass or whole. This makes them fall faster and they grow bigger until they fall to the surface without evaporating. Rain formed through collision and coalescence are water droplets that fall to the ground. Sleet is when the rain falls from the clouds and freezes before it hits the ground. Aggregation is the second process by which precipitation can be formed. This is when ice crystals grow rapidly as supercooled water freezes into ice crystals. They connect to make larger ice crystals. Snow is the main form of precipitation that is created through aggregation. This is when ice crystals fall because they were formed in the atmosphere when it was below freezing and they will fall as snow as long as it is below freezing until it hits the ground. If the atmosphere does not remain below freezing, the snow will melt before it reaches the ground and it will be rain. Hail is produced by updraft from clouds that are high in the sky where it is freezing and the droplets are taken upward and they collide with other droplets which form hailstone. In order for hail to be made, you will need a cumulonimbus cloud so you get a large enough updraft. Now let's talk about air masses. These are immense bodies of air which are characterized by similarity in temperature and moisture. This is also how they are classified. Moisture can be classified as either continental, which is dry, or maritime, which is moist. Temperature will be classified as tropical, or warm, polar, cold, or arctic, extremely cold. There are only five classifications because maritime arctic does not exist. So the m classifications are such continental arctic, continental polar, continental tropical, maritime polar, and maritime tropical. Now let's get into fronts. The first cold front is, well, I'm sorry, the co first front is a cold front. As you can see in my drawing, uh, there is a cumulonimbus cloud. This can also be cumulus clouds. Um, the weather that occurs with a cold front is usually a short downpour of rain, sometimes hail. As we said before, cumulus nimbus clouds create hail because of the updraft, um, and there can be thunder and lightning. As this cold front passes, winds are pretty gusty, and there will be a sudden drop in temperature. But when it passes, the temperature cools and the rain will stop, and either stratus or strato strato cumulus clouds will appear or there will be clear skies. Next we have a warm front. As you can see in my drawing there's multiple clouds that occur with warm fronts, um, usually nimbostratus, autostratus, cirrostratus, cirrus. The weather usually includes a light rain over a long period of time. There can also be thunderstorms 
if the air is unstable enough around the warm front. <laughs> Next we have the stationary front. This usually produces gentle to moderate precipitation and that precipitation can be in the form of rain or snowfall if the area is in a low atmospheric pressure. It'll be usually pretty cloudy along the front. And the differences in air temperature and wind are on opposite sides. Now we have an occluded front. This usually produces heavy to light precipitation, depending on atmospheric pressure. And this is usually because of a cumulonimbus or a nimbus stratus clouds. The wind will change directions as the front passes, and the temperature will either warm or cool. And the sky will usually be clearer, and the air will be drier. <laughs> Now let's talk about why tornadoes are so common in Oklahoma. So we usually get warm, humid air from the Gulf of New Mexico, um, hot, dry air from Arizona and New Mexico, then cold, dry air from Canada. And if these air masses meet in Oklahoma with the perfect conditions, they will form tornadoes and because we have a perfect strip of straight land called the Tornado Valley, they usually collide and create a front there because it, it is a perfect condition for them to meet. And that is the end to our presentation. Thank you.